Well, welcome along to our next instalment of Landlord Digital Lives, produced in association with our friends and partners at Landlord. And for today's instalment, I'm delighted to be joined by a gentleman who has 45 years experience in the property sector. It's agency trainer and uh, property influencer, Mike Day, making his debut on Property Tribes. And Mike, I'm very excited to welcome you to, to Property Tribes. I, I follow you on Twitter. I see you all over the social web. And I know you're really embedded and committed to the whole um, you know, concept of, of prop tech. So I think just to get started, be very good to hear about your background um, in this sector. Thank you. Well, it's lovely to be here. Um, as Vanessa's just said, 45 years in the industry, started when I was three. Um, I am a chartered surveyor, fellow of the NAA and, and ALA. So I've got more qualifications, more letters after my name than in my name. Um, I'm also a director at uh, a company called Techlet, which is a lettings uh, and sales CRM and uh, uh, automation platform. Um, and basically, I've worked my way through the industry, um, been a partner, director of various businesses, and now work with around about 850 agency clients, um, strategy, training, mentoring, etc. And I'm also a founder member of the Agents Together um, charity that was set up in the last six months. So a uh, pretty wide range of experience, and I'm very keen on progress and moving things forward. Fantastic. Well, a bit like Property Tribes is a, a barometer for what landlords are, are, are thinking and feeling and the pain they're experiencing. I imagine you're a bit of a barometer uh, for the challenges um, facing agents. And, you know, we can't deny it. COVID-19 has had a massive impact on our sector. We are very grateful that it currently remains open in the third lockdown. Um, but do you think that, you know, quite strangely, um, COVID has, has almost forced digital tools upon uh, agents that maybe were, and indeed landlords, who were maybe a little bit reluctant to start looking into them? There's no doubt that, uh, in my view, the, the COVID situation of the last 10 months um, will be the biggest paradigm shift in the property industry since the arrival of the internet. Uh, the internet made the biggest changes and everything that's hung off the back of that. Um, but COVID is, is, is doing the same sort of thing. Um, changes that were already underway, but perhaps slowly are now accelerating. Um, and those firms that are ahead of the game or those individual landlords that are ahead of the game um, stand the best chance both of surviving, if that's what it boils down to now, but also growing and being in the strongest position going forward. History is always written by the winners. Now is a good time to have a plan to be a winner. Well, it's wonderful you, that you said that because that's what this campaign is all about, to uh, draw attention to the benefits of digital technology. Um, and I think in one of the threads we've got, I must have listed about 20 benefits of using digital products and services and tools. What would you say would be, say, your top five benefits of, um, you know, taking up digital technology for, for landlords? Well, I think for everybody in every sector, but particularly landlords, productivity and speed. Um, productivity in so much that the more one can automate and do the heavy lifting elements of, uh, uh, of letting and managing uh, through various platforms and, and software, etc., cetera, um, can obviously save time, which in itself is money, um, but also uh, or, you know, automate those processes. So from a compliance point of view, um, can ensure that um, the increasing amount of regulation that the sector operates under uh, is more easily managed because it can be very difficult to keep on top of uh, some of that sort of stuff. So I think automation, accessibility, um, we live now in a 24-7 environment. The, uh, the high streets, we, we can all see that our high streets are, if not dying, they're certainly perhaps terminally ill. Um, and yet a lot of businesses, for example, are still open on a sort of nine to five basis when people are not around. So people are working from home. So you've got remote working. So access is important um, and facilitating things. I mean, 
Amazon is a prime example. You order at something at eight o'clock at night and it arrives the next morning. Well, you know, that's as good as it gets really in terms of sort of the retail um, sector. And that same trend is underway in the property sector. Property sector tends to be a bit conservative with a small C and takes a bit longer. Well, indeed, and our clients, our tenants, their demographic is that they're digital natives. They order from Amazon. They download from Netflix. You know, they expect that immediate, instant response. That's how their life, how they've grown up expecting that. So landlords that are still in analog mode, that they're not actually really um, servicing their tenants' needs in, in the most, uh, you know, efficient and up-to-date manner. No, I, I agree entirely. And through TechLed, for example, you know, um, TechLed is a, a, an automated platform that gives access to all stakeholders in the transaction. So the landlord, the agent, the guarantor, the tenant, whoever, um, and joins, joins it all up and, and automates as much of that flow as possible. Something like 40 to 45 percent of um, interactions with TechLed, so uploading of documents and, and filling things in and whatever, takes place outside of what one would have been considered as normal business hours. And therefore, we live in this 24-7 environment. People are perhaps busy during the day, actually earning the money to do whatever they need to do. Um, and actually, they want to do it during the adverts of Coronation Street or something. So um, that accessibility, that speed, tenants tend in the main to be younger um, than home buyers. Not always true, but um, they tend to be. And they are, they've grown up tech savvy, although older age groups and that is now, well now, fastest sort of groups and things on Facebook are often the over 55s because communication, they need it to communicate with their families and friends. So um, I don't like to pigeonhole age groups too much, but there's no doubt that, you know, the vast majority of tenants would certainly be extremely tech savvy. Well, I just want to unpack that a little bit more, Mike, in the respect of you know, digital tools and products working 24-7, 365, because in the past we've had analog and uh, analog at landlords that have said, well, I turn my phone off at six o'clock at night so tenants can't contact me. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure that I personally agree with that. All our properties are fully managed, um, but, you know, there's a, 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 a you know, a big raft of uh, self-managing landlords out there. If they were adopting these digital uh, tools um, where tenants can report online, um, you know, a, a broken boiler, uh, whatever it might be, a water leak. Um, you know, it's streamlining what they're doing. They don't need to keep uh, keep their phone on because it's all, you know, online and it's happening and it's being audited. And it's very, very important, uh, you know, particularly with things like um boiler problems that landlords do respond within 24 hours and you know the good thing about tech is it documents that whole audit trail as well ab ab absolutely and so you know you've got various players in the market so you know obviously on, on property management you know one of the big players um, of that type of technology is fixed flow um, yeah. and um, it provides that so that, for example, is integrated totally into, into TechLet and therefore seamless. Um, you've got payment uh, arrangements, maybe the, the pay props and the let's pays of this world, which can automate all of that to make life easy. So this stuff is out there. What is now happening is certainly in the agency sector, perhaps more than the individual landlord, um, it's joining it up. Um, um, and so it, it flows all the time to automate more and more of it. But it is there for everybody. One of the most basic things would be electronic signatures. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the days of sort of sending out a paper document, getting somebody to sign it, witness it, send it back, you know, well, that's just time and unnecessary time and expense. E-signatures um, are now, you know, the norm or should be the norm i mean they're probably not the norm but they they, they should be because they they aid productivity they mean that your a landlord is providing a better service to their tenant that tenant when they're taking a decision as to whether to rent a particular property or not they might just want to rent somewhere because it's the only place available but more often than not they become a bit discerning about the service they're going to receive 
mm-hmm. from a landlord and they want to know that that landlord is going to provide that ma- you know that managed service whether that's through an agent or directly um certainly agent clients of mine um would make a play on the fact that um a property was fully managed because they attract a better quality quite frankly they attract a better tenant um and a tenant will pay you know the the top price knowing that they've got the security of that service Mm -hmm. absolutely well i think one of the key things um that i'm picking up from you is um a lot of the prop tech solutions solve problems where uh, people might have to meet face to face or where documents are going to be signed. So you gave the perfect example of digital signatures. They can be done remotely. Um, digital tenant referencing using open banking can be done remotely. Um, digital keys, you can arrange access without being physically at the property. So everything we're seeing is actually playing into the kind of COVID story. Um, But it means that, as we like to say, with all this tech, you can carry your portfolio in your pocket. So, you know, on your smart device, so on your smartphone. So I, I can't see it going back to how it was before COVID. Can you? No, and I think that, um, you know, the whole lockdown scenario of COVID um, focused the mind. This, you know, it accelerated this paradigm shift. No question about that. From an agent point of view, of course, they were locked down in March last year and they were released again in May and boosted by various government um, activity. And currently they're still able to operate. But the general mood, here we are in January, um, is one of great concern despite the vaccine coming, we've still got great concern over some of the numbers and that on COVID. And those people that embrace technology and continue to embrace it. So for example, using video technology for for viewings, for inventories, for these sort of things. There's there's no need now, um, in most cases, to carry out some of the physical appointments and things that would have been the, the norm, say, a year ago. And some people, either individual landlords or agents, have really embraced that and conduct viewings that way, often accompanied. So they would hold a, a call like we're doing now on Zoom and they'd walk the person through the property. So they don't just send them a link to some pictures. Mm-hmm. They actually conduct a viewing. So you're having a conversation with them. And a landlord could do that with any prospective tenant. Um, and they'd soon ascertain an awful lot more about that tenant by walking them through the property in the same way as they would do if it was a physical appointment. So, and that's relatively straightforward, simple technology to get hold of and use, no great cost attached to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's another example of how at the early stage of a transaction, the marketing stage, digital technology really comes to play if people embrace it. Indeed. And, you know, there there will be landlords watching this, Mike, who say who will be saying, well, do you know what? I've used my spreadsheets and my files and my home office and my post-it notes and, you know, my my uh, calendar on the wall. I've used that, you know, all my landlord life. um, You know, I'm not going to change now. What, What would you say to them? Well, I would say to them that, you know, that may be okay. And depending on the scale of your um, portfolio, if you're managing a single property and you live next door and uh, uh, and you actually quite like being that involved and whatever, then, you know, that's fine. But let's be perfectly honest, that is going out of date for everybody. Um, and at some point in the future, some of that stuff will just be unsustainable from a, a business proposition. For any of the larger landlords, multi-property landlords or whatever, it becomes much more essential to, mm. to, to, to move forward simply because of the productivity gains, um, the ease of use, and, and a lot of software and systems and digital tools now allow the tenant mm. to access and do things through whatever platform and that it is so the landlord doesn't have to do it so the landlord productivity wise when he's using a spreadsheet or a diary and all these things there's a lot of manual stuff there um, that actually the tenant could be doing themselves and uploading 
Um, you know, you don't have to go to a shop to buy off of Amazon. You you do it through the through the site. The same approach applies with uh, landlord tenants. Mm. Well, it's been absolutely fantastic to have your input on our uh, themed month, uh, Mike. Really appreciate your contribution, um, and uh, I think we're going to see even more innovative products and services coming through and they're often very niche and address one very specific thing like digital signatures for instance um, and they are they, they're just going to uh, make the outcome for tenants better but I think um, and you you have alluded to this they also professionalize our sector and that's very much the way the government trend has been going as well so I can only see that all of these things are, are you know going to come and, and run together um, and ultimately you know tenants who are our customers our clients they're going to have a better experience of the private rented sector so we're here to promote landlords using these tools but also it's because we want tenants to have a better experience as well. So everybody wins. I, I agree with that entirely. And I mentioned very briefly compliance. The amount of legislation, whether that's a, an electrical safety certificate, a gas safety certificate, an EPC, fire regulations, licensing, all of these things can be managed um, much more easily in a digital environment than they can with pieces of paper. And that burden, if you want to see it as a burden of legislation, um, is very costly to people. And therefore, finding the tools, the, the automation tools and whatever to handle it is, is an enormous benefit. And a tenant will want to know quite rightly that the property that they're renting complies it meets whatever the standards are that's that's not that's not a, a nice to have that's a, a, a prerequisite mm. but it can be difficult to achieve if you're doing it on scraps of paper mm. well this is um why you know when nick and i came across the landlord software we were so impressed with it it has a complete compliance module um that when you input your due dates for whatever activity it might be it gives you a 90 day a 30 day a one week a three day notification saying your um rent guarantee rent guarantee insurance is about to run out your epc is about to run out your gas safety certificate is about to run out and it, it definitely it, it is massively about risk mitigation uh ensuring compliance um and uh making sure that you know landlords provide a safe and compliant home for their their uh, tenants which as you've said is a legal obligation it's not something that you either choose to do or not so it's, it's also a good thing from a point of view from the commercial aspect of um you know the property being maintained properly and meeting the appropriate standards um the the security for the tenant you know you're less likely to have issues with a tenant on i don't know paying the rent or maintenance or anything else if they feel and, and they trust the landlord and what the landlord's doing. It is a little bit of a two-way street. So, but you know, there is a part to play there, which tech can certainly help. I think just as we close this out, um, one thing that I, I noticed, I don't think we've covered in the other interviews enough is the importance of the inventory. And there are some fantastic digital inventory tools out there now. Um, I'm a massive believer and advocate of inventories and midterm property inspections. Uh, you want to know how the tenant is, is treating the property and these wonderful tools cr again create an audit trail. So if there's a deposit dispute at the end of the tenancy, you've got um, a whole record of the pre-tenancy condition and what happened at the end of the tenancy. So um, I guess you, you're a big supporter of inventory software as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, and if it was, a, you know, on a multi-property basis, whether I was an agent or a landlord with multi-properties, um, consistency of approach is important because mm -hmm. um, whilst there are organisations like AI, I, I speak straight, AIIP in terms of um, inventory clerks, 
they all produce slightly different things and therefore having a consistent approach particularly as you said when returning when we get to the end of uh, tenancies and deposit returns and this sort of stuff is important but into today's covid world where you know it's difficult to go into a property it may not be appropriate to go into a property for a property inspection actually you know there's nothing to stop a tenant who's got an iphone in their pocket walking around the property and, 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 and producing, you know, at least the some form of property inspection um, without the, uh, in, you know, actual physical inspection taking place. So there are, there are ways in which this software can not only be used mainstream, but also imaginatively and sensibly in challenging times like we have at the moment to get over some of the otherwise things that would be an issue. Well, we've actually ended this interview on another benefit of um, the use of digital uh, tools, and that is consistency of reporting. So thank you very much for um, joining me, Mike. It's been a real pleasure to have you on Property Tribes TV. Um, and, you know, we'd love to keep the dialogue open and uh, work with you a bit more on some other topics that we've got coming up uh, in 2021. Um, so it'd be lovely to, to be able to keep, uh, keep the communication going. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. So thank you very much for inviting me. And my door is always open. Thank you. <laughs>